All the chamber blended, got them CC equalized and polished. Now we're going to go in here and start correcting in the bowls what should have been done the first time. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see the actual casting bumps where the guy never went in here. He didn't touch any of this right here. None of the roof, none of the wall, none of the guide, which, you know, that kind of tells you basically he just barely hit the bowls, cleaned them up when they enlarged it for 202s and hit the entrances. But that's all right. The price that Mr. Imhoff told me he paid for it, I think he got pretty close to his money's worth. Okay, but anyway, what we're going to use is a cylinder. It's a specified width. Now, here's the trick. When you come in here, and you're going in here with this cylinder, the trick is you got to figure out whether you want to move material out of the wall or material out of the guide. And I want to move this wall over some, but I also want to take some meat off the guide. So what I do is I put a little pressure. I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to hit going toward the wall because I do want to move it over about a hundred thousand. Notice how it's coming over and hitting them casting humps. It won't reach down to it. So I've got to move this wall to accommodate it. But now I've got to start. I got the wall dug. Now I've got to come over here and hit on this guy. I'm going to come on over and pull over on the guide. Okay. So I've got me some meat, and if I take my hand, wow, that's a good 100,000th ditch I just dug. Now what i got to do is uh, come in here, and with this tool, uh, i got to move this uh, wall over right here so I can get in there with an the edge to straighten it out. Now there's still a big humpy ridge, but what that's going to enable me to do is uh, to come in here with a with a double cross cut egg and get down in here and really pull it. See, if I try to do it right now, I'm going to chew into my guide and I don't want to deface that guide too much. But at the same time, I've got to take this and kind of blend out the sharp edges of the guide. Now look how clean that is now compared to what it was when I started and had them casting lines. Now the next trick, I'm going to have to reposition the camera guys. Hold on a minute. I think I can do it like this. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull under and I'm going to pull that out because if I don't move this over, this is, I wish that I had 3D where we could see it, but I want to come in here and pull this in because there's a big ridge overhang right here where I dug that. Now, I pulled that in. Now I got to go back in here. Let's reposition the camera one more time. 
I think I can show you what I got to show you in this shot if I can work my hand around it. I hope my hand don't get in the way, fellas. So I'm going to come in here and start digging the casting flash out. See how I'm pulling it in just like I did on this side? And it just takes a lot of back and forth pull. See how I'll come here, then I'll come here. Putting a lot of pressure going downward. hold on to the compressor a minute okay now if you look what you're going to notice is um that blame it look how much more area if you look at this one untouched i can barely fit this shaft through there look uh, look how much wiggle room i got here moving that over about a hundred maybe a hundred and twenty thousands and then here i have thinned the guide out and moved the walls over mainly this wall compared to this really rounded piece right here that's when the air is trying to come through here it's actually gliding over the top of it it's not getting down around it this is going to increase your high lift flow areas lifts above 300 lift three four and five is going to see the action right in here as it tries to find the path of least resistance and go out into the chamber without the chamber wall being shrouded so um like I said, notice how it's thin. Now what I got to do now is I got to switch weapons. And for the next task I'm going to pick, uh, let's try a cylinder, a big one. I have a reason for it. I'm going to come in here and pull that tail of that guide in. I'm actually going to start back here and pull it in and straighten that out and chop that whole section of that guide off right there and then bring the height of it down to finish forming the bullet nose. Then, here's where one of the tricks are. And this is where it gets tricky because you got to really watch it here because this is where you can tear the head up. After I do all that, I'm going to take this and form a trench, if you will, straight back. Let me see if I can get you a better view. Okay, that's better. Now, after I go in here and bring the tail in and chop it, I'm going to start here and go all the way across. And I'm going to dig a trench about 125 deep. I'm talking about after I pull it up. What you can basically do is take the, the cylinder because it's straight and level it and chop all this section out. Then I'm going to start over here and this wall and go straight across and dive down. And this is gonna be probably a trick worth about anywhere from, I don't know, 12 to 18 CFM on your mid to high lift flow. So I'm gonna let you watch me do that. I'm gonna go ahead and catch all the rest of the guides up to this point while I got that tool. Then we'll switch to the cylinder. 
where I'll also go in that wall and try to move some of it and then we'll go to an egg and then we'll have this whole area here laid in. All right. All right. Now that we've uh, went in here and thinned out the sides of the guide, which you remember what I did, um, going in here and cutting this whole area out where the, the guide was and thinning that out, and then coming over here and purposely applying the pressure more to the push rod side, digging a trench, and then coming in thinning that out. Look how much room, I mean, it's really a lot of difference. I just wish you could be here to, to understand it, but anyway, then I go in here, pull that, level it with where I dug the trench, but there was something else I was doing too. When I was taking that cylinder and I was cutting, I was pushing downward. I was actually making a trench in a downward motion. Not a great deal, probably about 80 to 100 thousandths. And I did it here. So I dug deep, I, so I went left, right, deep, deep, and thinned out. And see how it's pointed now? If you look, you're gonna notice that the meat's about level with the diameter of the guide, except on the top. Um, look how much area. Okay, let's focus on this one. Look at this oblong here. Well, because I'm using that cylinder and digging deep, I'm going to use a different tool for this up here to pull it in. But now to really get the gains out of the double hump heads, or for that matter, any of the Chevy heads, we got a trick we got to do. We got to go in here and not just pull that down and raise that guy, but we got to dig the roof. Now let's take a look. I'm going to show you one that I've done right beside of it. Okay? Now the tool I'm using is this big whopper cylinder, and man, I can't tell you how careful you got to be. Because this is where you destroy the head if you get just the least bit overzealous. You got to go in here. Look at that. That is about 125 thousandths. So I, I kind of get my cutter here in line with the guide at the right angle pretty close. And I dig and I got to go across. See how I'm going across. I dig that trench right there. Now... By digging that trench there and pulling that guide, I'm shortening the length of the tail because you don't need the tail. That to hell with the tail. <laughs> so I do that and then I dig my trench. That's going to set the measurement up to take the roof so that the short turn, which is a major restriction, your two restrictions in the port, is the short turn from here on the floor to that area right there at the roof and then the push rod guide. So that's where you get into using math because there's a ratio, okay, of the width of the push rod bulge versus the height of the short turn of the roof to there and the expansion rate that it has to make in order to turn that air and it is absolutely cubic inch and RPM dictated. We're not going to get into the math part of it, but what I'm just trying to show you is one that's got that, one that's not. Now what I'm going to do, and notice I still haven't cut that down yet. So I got to start at the very back, dig the trench, and pull it forward. What I'm going to try to do, and this is going to be real hard because you, know, you guys know how much I want to get you in there, but it is so hard with this camera to focus it. So I'm gonna stop the tape right now and get and switch to another tape before it goes any further and we start digging.